this agent crashed every demo I threw at. So I took it to the production and watched it through a key error on data it generated itself. The code worked, but the architecture did not. Here's how to fix that permanently. You know the moment when your beautifully orchestrated agents from the last video works flawlessly in your machine, but it implodes the moment it reads the users. I have building agents for 18 months, and I have learned that there are exactly two fatal flaws that kill every prototype the moment you try to scale it. The first flaw is untyped outputs. Your large language model returns a slightly different JSON one day and suddenly your downstream code start passing air. Flow 2. Tight coupling. Your agent logic is welded to your infrastructure. Want to test it without burning API credits? Good luck. Today, we are killing both of these permanently. This is Pillar 5 Framework Maturity, the capstone. By the end of this video, you will have a production grade multi-agent architecture with three things. A strict data contract that makes your large language model output predictable. Dependency injection that makes your code testable. And the clean service layers that let you swap large language models without touching the business logic. A fair warning here. This is architecture refactoring. If you haven't built an agent yet, start with Pillar 3. The link is in the description. Here's the payoff. Same developer agent from Pillar 3, the one that generates HTML and CSS, but refactored. Watch. 7 test, 0.8 cent, 0 API calls, 0 dollar spent, and I know for certain that my agent handle every edge case I have defined. That's a mock LLM client, returning predetermined responses. The agent does it know the difference? It just processes data. This is what production grade looks like. Let me show you how to build it. Before we wire up the final piece, let me show you something that actually saved me about three hours this week. This video is sponsored by Skywalk, and I am mentioning them because they solved a specific problem I had while prepping this tutorial. I needed documentation slides, and a reference guide for a client project. Normally, that's three separate tools, three different export headaches, three different formatting nightmares. One prompt, Skywork generates a full document with proper sections, citations, and even suggests related research I hadn't considered. Then convert that same content into slides without me rebuilding the logic. Same information, different format, zero copy paste. What surprised me, it is not just generating stuff. The research depth is legitimate, pulling data from current sources and structuring arguments correctly. I still edit, but I am editing substance instead starting from a blank page. They do podcasts, web pages, spreadsheets, whole productivity suite angle. But honestly, the document to slice pipeline is what I keep coming back to. Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Decoded, where we break down complex tech concepts into digestible pieces. Thanks for having me, David. It's great to be here to discuss RAG architecture, which has become increasingly important for developers working with large language models. There's a discount link below, up to 20% off if you want to try it. I would probably use this even without the sponsorship. Which is why I said yes to begin with. All right, back to our build. Three architecture pillars. Each one solves a specific production problem. Pillar A, which is pedantic data contracts, your LLM outputs become predictable. Pillar B, 
dependency injection, your code becomes testable. PLC service classes for clean layer. Your architecture becomes maintainable. We are going to implement all three by refactoring the developer agents from Pillar 3. Same functionality, radically better foundation. First, we define what success looks like. Bidentic models are your contract with a large language model. See those field constraint, minimum length equal 50, means the large language model cannot return an empty string and call it HTML. The rigid pattern on file name prevents pass injection. Bidentic enforces this automatically. Here's a key insight. When you work with structure outputs with OpenAI or Cloud, you pass that schema to the API. The model is constrained to return a valid JSON matching your spec. No more regex parsing, no more I hope it looks right. Don't use optional for fields you actually need. If the LLM can skip it, it will skip it eventually. Now for the part that makes everything testable. Dependency injection sounds like academic. It's not. It's just asking for what you need instead of creating it. The LLM client is created inside the function. You cannot test this without calling OpenAI. Every test costs money. Every test depends on network. Every test is non-deterministic. New way, define what you need as an interface. Now every class that implements the generate structure can be used. The real OpenAI client, a MOOC for testing, a local Olama wrapper, your agent doesn't care which one it gets. A quick check-in. Now we have got two pieces. Pythonic schemas that define a valid output and an interface class that define what the LLM client must do. Now we connect them together through the actual service class. The next part is where it all clicks together. Here's where the magic happens. The developer service class sees the constructor it receives the LLM client. It doesn't create it. There's dependency injection in one line. The service doesn't know or care whether it is talking to GPT-4, Cloud, or Amok. And here, the result is typed. It's called artifact model. Your IDE knows it. Your tests know it. Bidentic validates it at runtime. Keep your service method focused. One method equal one responsibility. If invoke is doing too much, split it. Now is the payoff. Let's try the test suite together. Same class, different services injected, zero API calls, and the test runs in milliseconds. And I know what the LLM will return because I defined it. Run by test-v to verify. You should see all tests pass with no network activity. Let's be honest about the cost. This is more setup, more files, more thinking upfront. The trade-off if you are building a one-off script that runs once and you never touch again, skip this. But if your agent will have users, updates, and maintenance, this is non-negotiable. The upfront investment is real, maybe four to six hours if you want to refactor a complex agent system. But the return, hundreds of hours, over the life of the project. So, this is Pillar 5 Framework Maturity, the capstone of the architect's playbook. What surprised me building this series is the shift in identity. When I started, I was writing agent code. By the end, I was designing agent systems. There is a difference. Standardization gives us MCP, a common language. Autonomy gives us vision, the ability to see. Collaboration gives us orchestration, teams of specialists. Reliability gives us observability, the flight deck. And now, maturity gives us architecture, foundations that don't crack. And finally, if you watch the Architect Playbook series and you find it helpful and you gain some new information, 
Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to my channel. The era of vibe coding is over. Build like an architect.